Hi and welcome to Full Beam. My name's Sai. And I'm Al. And I'm going to give you a walk around on the BMW X3. Let's go mate. And this is we start at the front. There's a good place to start. Okay, so BMW X3 2018. Totally revamped uh, the front. In the old X3 there used to be circular spotlights. Now in this one you've got a more aggressive look. More aggressive intakes and a strip of spotlights. Uh, one thing that is really noticeable is the size of the grill. The grill on the 2018 third generation X3 is much, much bigger. Uh, full LED headlights, 21 inch alloys, and like I said in, in the podcast, if you watched it, you can see it's two tone, it's well bi color according to BMW. So you've got silver and then the grey in the background, which is silver. Now, it's a big color design as well. It's, yeah, it's, um, it's got the M small. Take there again to add to the sportiness, and if you come down the side and around the back, you can see how different uh, the back is compared to again the early generations. Total revamp of the rear light cluster, bringing the light across the back of the car. And uh, so, what was it like when the old ones did it go up, up the no, sides? It was more of just here. If you look at the, the, the early generation, oh, okay. actually, the light was kind of here, it didn't go across the boot. Oh, okay. um, much more pronounced lines as well across the back of it and uh, to add to the sportiness uh, twin exhaust tailpipes there you go and uh, on the M Sport uh, model you get the rear wing over the back as well very nice okay um, with the M Sport plus pack you get uh, the colour coated uh, roof rails as well because the so what that means is the black yes or it'd be red or it'd be blue or whatever okay so the last thing you want is a car with uh, roof rails and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and then if you come down the side, you get a side view. It looks, it looks pretty. It looks like quite a smooth line, but when you get closer to the vehicle, you can actually see how deep the line is there. If you get right down, you can see. And you can see. Still, that, mate. Yeah. Hope you can get that. And you can see how pronounced this is here as well. How much that sticks out at the bottom comes right out down the side of the car. Okay. So again, adds to the sporty nature of the SUV. So what does that do? Does that improve the aerodynamics? Or? Well, I don't really think it does in, in, a, in, a, in a diesel 4x4. I think it's just all to add to the muscular chiseled looks of the vehicle. Again, you can see it goes, like, goes right down the whole length of the car. And that one come, it protrudes right out the bottom of the car as well, just again to the sportiness. That's what the engine. The engine? Yes. Under the bonnet. Oh, look at that. Two litre turbo diesel X3. Twin no. turboed. Not much to look at compared to, well, not much to look at on the M140 either. Um, if you could see it, you'd say it's a beast. I hate this modern thing about covering up, covering the, up the engine. I hate that. Yeah. It just kind of takes the thrill away, but I mean, you can see the size of it. Two firm strut braces there as well for the rigidity. You've never seen them before? No. No. So yeah, everything, everything is where you'd expect it to be. Apart from, there's a, a weird thing with BMWs, modern day BMWs, that's the positive port for your battery. Was oh, it? But the actual battery itself is in the boot. And okay. all BMW batteries are now in the boot. Okay. 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 Yeah, excuse me. Nice boot size. Yes. So, uh, automatic tailgate as well. Loving that. And you can actually, there the is the function to open and lower, so you can do it. You don't, Set where you want your boot to open. Uh, okay. Yeah. Massive, massive boot. I'd get in that easy, wouldn't I? Let's give it a whirl, Al. I'll hold your camera. Are you joking? No. How many owls could be fit in an X3? Down he goes. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant. Oh no, I can't get it open. 
and here is my glamorous assistant. Oh, that was quite scary. <laughs> A massive boot. For a second I felt like it was a good fellas. And now this comes out as well to, to give you even more space and it's a what do they call it a 70 bit split. Uh, yeah. so again it, and they fold flat. <coughs> uh, more storage in there as well I imagine. Well not much. It's not your spare tires must be. Oh yeah, there you go. That's nice that man. Yeah. Okay. A little bag in there. All lined and again automatic boot closure as well. Very nice. So look inside. We can have. Oh look at this. You can see the welcome sign on the there screen. You go. Welcome Simon. Yes. Okay. That's very nice. What's the official name of that colour? That is, I think it's just the ivory. I'm not too ivory. sure. It, it looks a bit too cream. Could you just be ivory, yeah? Maybe it's not. I'm not too sure. You've caught me off guard. Um, so for a total, a total uh, revamp and a, a much of a total, a much more of a luxury space than in the M140. m 140s got very basic seats. Uh, this has got the actual interior, this is basically now just a mini X5. It's got it's got all the infotainment system and the dash layout of both the five and the seven series. Yeah. So this has got the entire layout of the luxury uh, seven series. So you've got your 10 and a half inch screen. Uh, this has got the Harman Kardon updated hi-fi. You've got a black roof liner, which again adds to the sportiness, makes you feel enclosed in the cabin. Uh, these are updated seats. Uh, with all these inserts in them, they come over again to add to the sportiness. That's it. That is just the big leather glove box. Um, and I think I might have a charging port in there. No, I think the, I'm not too sure where the charging port is. You've got a USB port in there, and again, the cigarette lighter for any, any kind of ports, any kind of chargers like that. So if I come in. <coughs> right, then explain this to me. Okay. Yeah. This here, this centre console, this is all your um, ventilation, okay, so you've got your heated seats, uh, front passenger and driver, you've got your air conditioning, you've got obviously your, your demisters on your windows, then um, you've got your preset, the bonnet is still open from before, but never mind, you've got your presets, so one, two, three, four, five, six, four, um, I'm not actually too sure, maybe, maybe they're radio stations, uh, but you, everything is done through what they call the BMW iDrive, which is here. Okay. And again, this is the Pro interior. Uh, normally the, the dial is a bit smaller, but this is the Pro. And you've got your media, your menu, your maps, your navigation, and everything is done through this. Okay. Okay. So you go, you press back, and that's all your radio stations. It connects to Spotify. Um, I don't want to put Spotify on because it's our actual podcast that I'm listening to and I just thought that would be cringe. So we'll just, we'll just leave it there. Um, but if you go to menu, that is everything. You can control everything in the car. So that's my current radio station. That's my phone. I get my calendar. I get my text messages. I make my phone calls through it. It's touch screen. Navigation again. The sat nav tells you exactly where you are when you get to when you get into a, a built-up area or a city. The sat nav actually turns to 3D, so you get all the tower blocks and the tall buildings. It looks super impressive. And when it's night time, your sat night your sat nav goes dark as well. You can set your weather to your current location. So again, the connected drive. The weather today in Southport is a minimum of 16, a high of 21. And then I've got my vehicle. It tells me my average speed and my miles per gallon and any kind of notification. So I've got a big red triangle there and that, that is telling me that my boot is still open. So that, that's at first glance. Then you can go further into each one of these. So again, for my vehicle, these are all the things you can do. So vehicle settings, I can change the color of the lights inside. I can say how many times I want to press the button for the doors to lock, if it'll just lock and unlock one door, if it'll do them all. Intelligent safety, it'll tell me if there's a person running out in front of me. It gives me an early collision warning. It'll even brake for me um, if I'm too close to something or I'm going to reverse into something when I'm parking. 
So all very clever. Uh, attentiveness assistant, I don't know how it does this, but my car knows when I'm tired <coughs> and it takes measures to make sure that I'm not a danger. That's a bit creepy. Yes, it is. Uh, so I think that's again, when, you, when you're drifting in lanes and stuff and things like that, it actually picks up on it and senses that and senses if your uh, driving is becoming erratic uh, and it, it puts uh, things in place. Uh, there's parking activation. Uh, so it's got a full, it's got full sensors front and rear, uh, but it's got a reversing camera, um, which you can see, full HD reversing camera in a fisheye lens, so it almost gives you a panoramic view of that's, what you can see. That's really good. Uh, and then at the, on the left hand side, it, that's basically just a radar, so that's your car and that's how close you are, and that's an actual image. That's really good, that Okay. Um, but in the... In well, that's all this This is the gear, this is the gear, this is the gearbox. Um, so if I go back into my vehicle, obviously I've, I've just shown you everything that you can do there. Um, you can do the iDrive settings, change how sensitive the, pad, the touchpad is, change the language, everything else. Driver profile, so it's got me and my wife set to this, so different stations, different height that you want the boot to open, you can do all that off two keys. Um, your vehicle status, it measures your oil pressure, your, your oil, it measures your tyre pressures everything else you get notifications um, and then technology in action you've got efficient dynamics your driving style your x drive status i think your x drive status is basically just a compass yeah and it tells you what your pitch and your yaw is and what direction you're heading in and as you go over a bump the car on the screen goes over the bump as well um, Sport displays not really necessary in this, but again, it shows you your power and your torque when you put your foot oh, down. Okay, I, yeah, I like that. Yeah, um, driving information the owner's handbook, even though you get a handbook in the glove box, you also get a handbook and the pages come up on the screen. You can scroll through it like you would on an iPad or a Kindle or whatnot. Okay, and then if you come down here, Al, you've got your two cup holders, which are more than adequate enough. You've got big, massive buckets in the doors. This is your eight-speed manual transmit, automatic transmission, sorry. So again, it's foot on brake, it's down for drive. It's up one for neutral, up again for reverse. Your camera comes on. Down one, put it in park, take your foot off the brake. If you wanted to, and you were feeling particularly sporty, you can um, put it into drive, move it over to the left, Manual shifter is highlighted, and then you've got your flappy paddles on your gear on your steering wheel. Oh, yeah, oh, here dear. and here. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. And just flip it back over, and again, just straight back into automatic mode. Uh, you've got your park, so you've got to put it in neutral and then set it to park. But if you're at a set of traffic lights or, or wherever you, you're in traffic and you don't want to take your, you don't want to mess around with the handbrake, you can just press auto H, which is auto hold. Press auto hold and it's similar to the to the handbrake, but with auto hold, as soon as you put your foot on the gas, that just comes off. Whereas if you did it with the handbrake, you just wouldn't move anywhere. So it's just a, a temporary measure. Okay. Um, so let me show us on your drivers. Let me come round. Open your door a minute. I'll just come round with you. Yeah. Okay. So you're at the driver's side now. Uh, so again, driving position is brilliant. Lots of adjustment in the seats. This button here actually inflates and deflates the leather um, kind of bolsters or whatever they're called so that inflates and deflates there's loads and loads of m badges and um side what are they called step sills or whatever sills, yeah. sills so m on there um i think maybe the one thing that they have gone over the top with is the x uh, there's x's everywhere there's x's there there's an x3 down here there's obviously x's on those door pillars there if you come yeah. outside you can see there's an x actually embossed into the bodywork. You can see that really, X3. Oh yeah, yeah. X, yeah. Uh, there's end seals on all the doors, front and rear. Um, there's a contrasting stitching in the leather. If you look really, really close, that's almost like an olivey green stitching, which is lovely. Oh yeah. Um, and oh. then uh, it's got the updated... Oh, carbon. Yes. Very nice. It's got the updated digital cockpit. So, nothing is on until you start it up, and then when you start it up, it all comes on, lights up in front of you. Um, gives you an image of your car, lets you know if you boot or any of your car doors are open, tells you if your passengers have got their seatbelt on or not. Uh, and also, when you're navigating and you've got your sat-nav on, your sat-nav comes up on the screen, but it also comes up here. 
as well, which is really clever. And it comes up with different arrows and like a lane detection, a lane warning, all here in front of you. Um, obviously, fuel gauge, temperature, um, what it's what mode you're in, either sport, put, sport plus, comfort, eco pro, and the gear that you're in. And there's your range also shown down there as well. What's your pedal positions like for the RMS? Perfect. Uh, again, big accelerated <coughs> pedal, so you can just leave your foot on there. Uh, there's a nice foot rest. And basically everything's just done with this foot, so you change gear, put it into obviously your driving mode, and that foot is just just rests on there. Okay, anything you want to say about the on the door? The... No, that's all. Just all the electric windows. So front and rear electric windows, uh, mirror adjustment, uh, unlocking locking the, the actual doors, um, and that is your boot release as well. If you don't ah, want to get off your keys, okay. but you can't shut it internally, yeah. it'll just open it and pop it. Right. Um, and I, I just think a lovely, a lovely steering wheel. Uh, really nice to hold. Really nice to drive. Very responsive. Get a lot of the, the, the road feeling through the steering wheel. Um, and everything is designed to the driver. Everything is almost just tilted towards the driver as well. So everything is dead easy to use. Um, obviously, indicators, lights, uh, window wipers. Your lights are here as well. So your front and rear uh, spotlights. But again, if you just set your light to the position of, of A, it's automatic. So once it's set to A, the car does it itself and turns the lights on and off when required. Brilliant driving position, as is standard with BMW. And uh, I think that's about it. What's that on your steering wheel then? That's a limiter. I can limit my speed. Okay. So I can set it to like 30 miles an hour and the car will go above that. That's yes, okay. Uh, right, some another M badge there. Another M badge, they are everywhere. Yeah. I like the stitching on the, on the, the horn as well. It's, yeah, lovely. It's really lovely. Nice. Yeah. Oh, and. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to know from the Alp? I think that's it, mate. I think that's quite a thorough X3 walk around. Uh, the, again, uh, the bath is abundance of room in the back. Yeah. That's yeah. really nice. Set up for, for DVD players. I love the, the dark, um, the black roof is just so calming. Yeah. It's very, very restful, that. Um, and uh, fully. Uh, so can you just sort out the, the, the airflow in the back? Yes, uh, and it's totally independent of the driver and the front passenger as well. So if you were really hot in the front and had the aircon on, but in the back you were cold, you can have heat. So it's totally independent. There's no uh, rear heat seating, but the ventilation, the warm and the cold ventilation is totally independent to the front. Nice. Sorry for this one, this is our first walk around, it's, you'll be liked it. Yeah, absolutely, and hopefully if it was rubbish when we play it back, they'll only get better. <laughs> but uh, happy to, to do these kind of videos and, and, and uh, hope you enjoy them. Next time, probably be my Ford Fiesta, which is a bit of a calm down. It is, it'll only take about three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right guys, enjoy. Thank you, thanks bye, for watching, bye bye. bye.